Carlos Correa of the Houston Astros after driving in the winning run against the Yankees in Game 2 of the American League Championship Series on Saturday. Correa was the number one pick in baseball's 2012 amateur draft. El Sagitti images Houston, his bumbling team was 40 games under .500. Eleven times, the Houston Astros had pushed a game into extra innings. Eleven times, they had lost. This was an August morning in 2012, and few fans would show up to Minute Maid Park later that night. The Astros would be shut out and lose for the 25th time in 28 games. From his office beyond left field, in a converted train station on Crawford Street, the team's new architect made no excuses. Jeff Lunau, the general manager, had inherited the worst team in baseball. Fixing it would take time. He didn't have much else, but he had that. A lot of clubs get into a situation where you know in your heart that the team needs to rebuild, but at the same time you want to put a product on the field that gives the fans some hope for the present, said Lunau, who had been hired from the St. Louis Cardinals the previous winter. You end up getting stuck in the middle, the Astros wanted no part of the middle. Baseball had just enacted a new collective bargaining agreement that greatly incentivized losing, giving the worst teams the most money to spend on amateur talent. The Astros had picked first in the draft that June, and would do so again in each of the next two seasons. Those number one picks, the good and the bad, help shape the story of today's Astros, who roll into the Bronx for Game 3 of the American League Championship Series on Monday after two victories at home. In 2012, the Astros used the first pick to choose Carlos Correa, now their superstar shortstop, who homered and doubled in the winning run in Game 2 on Saturday. But in 2013, they chose Mark Apple, a Stanford right-hander who has not appeared in the majors. In 2014, they took a high school pitcher, Brady Aiken, who turned out to be injured. In a way, those picks illustrate the finicky nature of baseball prospects. In a typical collection of three, one will blossom, one will fade and one will get hurt. The difference is the Astros knew when to bail on the two busts and how to salvage value from them. When a physical exam revealed trouble in Aiken's elbow, the Astros backed off their plans to sign him for a $6.5 million bonus. Negotiations fell apart, and the team used a compensatory pick in the next draft on another shortstop, Alex Bregman, now their starting third baseman. And after their bullpen collapsed in a 2015 Division Series loss to Kansas City, the Astros traded with Philadelphia for closer Ken Giles, putting Apple in a five-player package, everybody knew who he was, Giles said. When you're a number one overall pick, everybody's going to know who you are. For me, he was just another player that got his opportunity, and I was another player that got my opportunity. I just took a different route, treating a number one overall pick as just another player is not easy. So many people in the organization commit to the choice, Lunau said, and everyone pays attention. Correa, Wright, and Alex Bregman wear jersey numbers that correspond with their draft slot. Correa was the number one pick, and Bregman number two. David J. Phillip Associated Press You want so desperately for that to work out to validate all the people involved in making that decision, said Lunau, who holds a master's degree in business administration from the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern. But there's a concept in business school called forget sunk costs, an economic concept that if things change, you can't continue to invest in that outcome improving if it's not going to get better. There's certain times you just have to change your strategy. We did that in both cases. Apple needed elbow surgery last year and had a 5.27 ERA in Class AAA this season. Aiken had Tommy John surgery within a year of being drafted by the Astros. The Cleveland Indians still selected him 17th overall in 2015, but he had a 4.77 ERA in Class A this season, with more walks than strikeouts. Giles, meanwhile, converted 34 of 38 save chances this year and has averaged 13 strikeouts per nine innings over two seasons with Houston. Bregman hit .284 with 19 home runs and 17 steals in his first full Major League season. He quickly found his place in a lineup he feared would have no room for him on draft day. My first reaction was that they already had a really good shortstop, so I did and Tina where I was going to play, Bregman said, referring to Correa. Then they told me to play short in the minor leagues and then move to third base. But I thought it was a fun organization, so much youth. It was just kind of ahead of the curve in the analytical department and an organization that works really hard, the chances of finding a high-impact player drops significantly from the first pick to the second. In the history of the draft, which started in 1965, 21 players picked first have compiled at least 20 career wins above replacement, according to baseball reference. Just 12 players picked second have done so.
but Lunau said the Astros viewed Bregman as the best player in that 2015 draft class, ahead of Dansby Swanson, who went first to Arizona. Bregman played at Louisiana State, and Swanson, who is now with Atlanta, played at Vanderbilt. A senior scouting advisor, Charlie Gonzalez, vouched for Bregman's passion, they both put up really strong numbers in strong conferences on good teams, and they both had similar track records and they both could play shortstop, Lunau said. But there was really that extra baseball rat element to Bregman. Had the Astros made a different choice in 2013, though, they would have already had a third baseman. When they took Apple, who had a clean medical history and sound mechanics and had been chosen eighth overall by Pittsburgh the year before without signing, they passed on Chris Bryant. The Chicago Cubs eagerly used the next pick on Bryant, who was the National League most valuable player last season and helped the Cubs win the World Series. Bryant hit 54 homers while batting .353 over three years at the University of San Diego, but he also fanned once every 4.7 at-bats. That scared off the Astros. Bryant had a high risk profile just because he struck out at a rate that we didn't have a lot of people to compare him to, Lunau said. We had George Springer in our system, who was striking out at a pretty high rate but hitting for high power, and was an exciting player. That was probably the biggest uncertainty that we had. We knew he would hit and hit with power. The question was, with that kind of strikeout rate, what that would turn into in the big leagues as badly as they missed on Bryant, though, the Astros made an inspired choice in Correa, who was 17 and playing at the Puerto Rico Baseball Academy. The Astros did not consider Correa among their top eight or so possibilities in January of his draft year. But that May, acting on a tip from Michael Ios, now an assistant general manager, they flew him to their Florida complex and used him in a scrimmage at extended spring training. Jeff Lunau in 2015. He became general manager of the Astros in late 2011. David Goldman Associated Press The Astros were struck not just by Correa's skills, but by his presence, poison confidence. In third grade, Correa had asked his parents to enroll him in a bilingual school so he could conduct interviews in English when he reached the majors. After signing with the Astros, he paid no attention to the other number one picks who followed. I don't even remember who it was, Correa said. I didn't follow the draft after that. I was more focused on what was going on at the big league level, because that's where I wanted to be. I would keep up with every single game, I would read every box score, see how the shortstops were doing. I was trying to get there as soon as I could. Correa reached the majors within three years and won the American League Rookie of the Year award in 2015. He hit .315 with 24 homers this season, and his on-base plus slugging percentage, .941, was the best in the majors for shortstops with at least 450 plate appearances. Just as Bregman wears uniform number two for his draft position, Correa wears number one. He has fully embraced the burden, oftentimes we care about how players handle failure I care about how players handle success, manager A.J. Hinch said. There's never been a day that I've been his manager that he hasn't talked about trying to get better, Hinch added we're just scratching the surface. This kid could bona fide be the best player in baseball when all is said and done, Correa and Bregman offered more to the Astros than potential. Both accepted bonuses below the recommended value for their draft slot, allowing the Astros to redistribute the savings to other premium picks whose demands scared off other teams. In Correa's draft, the Astros paid above the slot value for pitcher Lance McCullers Jr. and infielder Rio Ruiz. In Bregman's draft, they used their savings to help afford outfielder Daz Cameron. McCullers was an all-star this season, and Ruiz and Cameron have been traded. Ruiz to Atlanta in a deal for catcher Evan Gaddis, and Cameron to Detroit in a deal for the ace starter Justin Verlander. This was all part of Lanau's plan, the reward for suffering while adhering diligently to a blueprint. The Astros' strategy bothered some other teams, who grumbled that they were not trying to field a competitive major league roster. Yet the Astros were using the rules to their advantage, and this is the result. It is satisfying to know that we stayed the course, we made adjustments when we had to, and we executed the strategy that was best for the Houston Astros, given our market size, our revenue, and where we started, Lunau said. It wouldn't work for everybody, but it would certainly work for us. Now Lunau's challenge is sustaining a winner, and finding a way to beat a system that helped him succeed. In that 2012 season, the five worst teams were the Astros, the Cubs, the Colorado Rockies, the Minnesota Twins and the Cleveland Indians. All made the playoffs this year. In the 2012 World Series, the San Francisco Giants played the Detroit Tigers. This season, they were the worst teams in the majors. Picking first overall can rejuvenate a franchise. 
but the Astros would rather not do it again. We're going to do everything we can to avoid that cycle, Lun now said. We feel more of a sense of urgency, now that we're having success, to make sure that doesn't happen to us. A version of this article appears in print on October 16, 2017, on page D1 of the New York edition with the headline How Hits and Misses Raise the Astros from the Depths.